<laughs> Hi, isang mapagpalayang hapon sa iyong lahat. Ayan. So, ang saya ko this day. Actually, we are all blessed with all the gifts and blessings that God has given to us. Not only today, but in the future. Maraming salamat sa lahat ng aking mga sudyante, mga guro, at mga magulay, magulang na patuloy pa rin sa pagsuporta ng ating iitulay online tutorial program. Hello po sa inyong lahat. Isang masaya at masaganang hapon sa inyong lahat. Ayan, so simulan na natin ang ating pagkatuto ngayon. Sa mga hindi pa nakakilala sa akin, ako nga pala ang inyong lingkod. Tutor Rome from SBO, Davao City. At ako'y nagtuturo sa Francisco Bangoy National High School. At kasama ko naman si Tutor Jen, same in Davao City Division. At siya ay nagtuturo sa Daniel R. Aguinaldo National High School. Hello, hello, Tutor Jen. Kamusta ka na? At the miss ka na namin. Ayan, hello po sa inyong lahat. And good afternoon sa lahat ng aking mga isadyante sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo, lalo-lalo na dito sa Philippines, ayan, sa iba't ibang paaralan. Okay, hello to, to name few, hello Renz, hello Sofia, hello Ayraiza, Liana, Marias, Jessavi, Espanyo, and a lot more. At hello din kay Miss Galilea Ann Pagobo, our keynote speaker for next week. Abangan nyo yan. She's watching right now. Hello, Lay. Yan, of course, marami tayong matututunan sa kanya next week sa ating pagtatapos ng Science 7 ito line. And huwag kayong malungkot dahil patuloy pa rin kami magbibigay ng pagkatuto sa inyong lahat. Ayan. Okay, so bago natin, bago tayo magsimula sa ating, this is what we call our summative examination. Okay. Bibigyan muna natin ng parangal ang ating mga mahusay, chutis of the week. Okay, sila yung nagsumite ng magandang output. Lahat naman kayo, magagandang output ninyo. At maraming salamat sa inyong suporta. Unahin na natin si Kerubin Gabriel Villamor. Yan, congratulations Kerubin. He is from grade 7 de Jesus. His school is in Novaliches High School, Quezon City Division. National Capital Region. And congratulations to his teacher, Luis Jane M. Cortesano, with his loving parent, Mrs. Mira Kerubin. Yan. Congratulations, Kerubin. Napakaganda at napakahusay ng iyong pag paggawa ng the differentiation between lunar at saka solar eclipse. Ayan. Congratulations, Kerubin. Next is Enrico Manuel Dalupan. Ayan. Hello, Enrico. Ang saya-saya ng batang ito. Napakagibo. At hindi lamang siya um, nagsumite sa science, pati na rin sa iba't ibang subjects. Ayan. Nakakatuwa talaga tong batang to. Congratulations, Enrico. He is from grade 7 coconut section. Ayan. So, ang cute naman ng section coconut. And his school is in Virgin De Las Flores High School. Ayan. And from Division of Bulacan. National Capital Region pa rin. And he, um, his science teacher is Gerard Minten Tolentino. And with his loving parents, Mary Grace Tapang and Ernesto Dalupan Jr. Ayan. Congratulations. At maraming salamat sa inyong suporta. Lahat kayo panalo. Um... I am very honored to be your tutor for the whole duration of your learning. Ayan, so congratulations. Maraming salamat sa inyo. Um, hello to Ma'am Janet Flag pa tayon. Ayan, so maraming salamat. Ayan, okay. With with her student, Asha pa tayon, a grade 7 learner from KNHS Marikina City, school year 2021-2022. Ayan. So, congratulations. Thank you so much, Ma'am Janet. As a parent, napakalaki po ng contribution nyo sa inyong mga anak. Maraming salamat. Thank you so much. And of course, do not forget, di ko man sinabi, pero ginawa nyo na in our comment section. I would like to put your full name, your section, your school, and the name of your science teacher. And also, do not forget, 
to share our live session right now. Our live session, since we're already done with our six lessons, now we will have our summative examination. This is to gauge your learning if you have learned a lot in our lessons. Ayan. So then, don't forget to tag two friends, at least two friends from your from your sharing or more. You can you can comment, you can tag more friends so that they may be able to know that our session has been starting or started. And then please also bring your module if you have your module and also your pen and your paper. Hello, hello to Samantha Blasi. Hello. Maraming salamat sa pag-share. And I would like to shout out also our two directors right now, Sir Earl and also Sir Rainier. Hello. Thank you so much, directors, uh, for always being there. And also to our program head, Sir Kevin. Hello, Sir Kevin. Maraming salamat sa inyo. Okay, so this time for our week 7, quarter 4, we will have our summative examination. Um, I have a question. If you are all ready for our summative examination, please type ready or make some noise. <laughs> make some noise or put some, ano, if you want to start it now and ready na kayong sumagot sa ating mga katanungan. Our questions is from lesson 1 to lesson 6 from um, learning competencies of um, 1 up to learning competency 6. Okay. So, yeah. So, ang saya-saya naman. I would like to shout out all my students from Francisco Bangoy National High School. Most especially to my students in front of me. Yes. Uh, grades, grade 8, Bayabas, mag-ingay kayo! Ayan. Yeah, nasa harap sila. Nasa, sila, nasa harap sila sa... <laughs> Oo, kasi nga hindi pwede. Napabayaan ko din ang aking, aking mga sergeante. So, yun. Nakikinig naman sila at meron din sila pagkatuto. Ayan. So, maraming salamat. I know you are all ready. Yan. Richmond is ready. I will. Ashley, Maria Jessavi, Eliza, JM, Kauri. Kerubin, they are all ready and all set for our summative examination. Our summative exam examination is only 20 items. Ayan. Sige. Ready? Go. Okay. So let me read the directions and also my students here right now watching live is also answering. Ayan. So directions, read each question carefully. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Use a separate sheet of paper for your answers or comment it down. Ayan. So, let's start. Okay, number one. Which of the following imaginary lines can be found at zero degree latitude and divides the Earth into southern and he northern hemispheres? A. Equator. B, Prime Meridian, C, Tropic of Cancer, or letter D, International Date Line. So what's your answer for number one? So don't worry, just put, just choose a letter of your choice. Kung gusto nyo i-type, okay lang din, pero okay lang din na yung item at saka letter lang. Okay, so Kauri, um... First answer is letter A, Ma'am Janet also A, Vera, Alriza, K, Alriza, Maria Jezevi, Elisha, Roxy. All of their answers, letter A. Let's check. Very good. It's letter A. Kayo Jan, what's your answer? Okay, A then. Okay, sige. Now, let's proceed to number two. Okay, now. Which of the following statements is true about places located between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn? A. They experience snowfall in winters. B. They experience wet and dry seasons. C. They experience winter, spring, autumn, and summer. Or letter D. They experience average temperatures below 10 degrees Celsius. So what's your answer for number two? Go, go, go. Ayan. So, yan. Um, Richmond answered letter C. Okay. Others? Iba pa? Nag-iisip pa? Elisha also answered letter C. Okay. 
Kirubin answered C. Okay. Now let's check their answers or the answers for number two. Almost of all of, all of their answers, letter C. So again, true about places located between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. So the correct answer for number two is. Letter B, they experience wet and dry seasons because this between the Tropic Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn is near in the equator. So it means they can only experience wet and dry seasons. Okay, number three. Which of the following are renewable natural resources? Okay, A, wind, coal, and iron. Letter B, clay, coal, cotton. C, sunlight, wind, trees. Or D, soil, aluminum, or and wind. What's your answer for number three? Again, this is renewable natural resources. Okay, JM answered letter C, Kerubin C, Richmond C, Okay, almost all of their answers are letter C. Now, let's check. Very good. It's letter C, renewable. Sunlight and wind and trees are renewable. Congratulations. Now, let's proceed to number four. <clears throat> why is soil considered as non-renewable resource? Again, why is soil considered as non-renewable resource? A, it is a natural resource that can easily be replenished or generated. B, it is a natural resource that takes a short time to be replenished once used. C, it is a natural resource that takes a long time to be replenished once exhausted. Or letter D, it is a natural resource that is used as a source of raw materials to make products we use daily. The correct answer, answer rather, for number four is letter C, very good. Ayan, all of your answers are correct. It's letter C. Number five. Coal is a mineral that is used widely by many industries such as transportation, electricity, and manufacturing. Which of the following is one of the disadvantages of coal that greatly affects the environment? A, it is one of the big contributors of pollution. B, it is a non-renewable resource which has an increasing price. C, it is not an ideal resource for it the main cause of fires in populated cities. D, it is not used throughout the world that jobs it produces do not help solve the problem of unemployment. So what's the answer for number five? Okay, almost all of your answers are letter B. Let's check. It is... Letter A, coal is one of the big contributors of pollution. Okay, next. Number six. Why do we need to support the objectives of sustainable development? Okay, or other called as sustainable development goals. A, they encourage the present generation to use natural resources more than what is needed. B, they ensure resources will be enough to last and support the needs of future generations. Or C, they keep non-renewable resources such as metals and fossil fuel from being mined and consumed. Or D, they keep future generations from overusing the natural resources that the present generation have. So choose the best answer for this. All of, your, all of the answers are yes, um, acceptable, but you need to choose which the best answer. Ayan. Okay, so the correct answer for number six is letter B. Yan. So, may mga nakatama. Richmond, congratulations. Ashley, my student of F. Bangoy. Also, okay, Rachel, Mom Janet. Wow. From Massachusetts. Savior also got it correct. They ensure resources will be enough to last and support the needs of future generations because the word is sustainable development. Okay, from the, from, from the program itself, it is sustainable development goals. So it should be 
supported until it lasts and needs for future generations. Okay? Thank you for your answers. Congratulations. Now, let's proceed to number seven. Go. Now, let's go to the layers of the earth. Ah, no, sorry. The layers of the atmosphere, rather. What layer of the atmosphere do weather and most cloud phenomena occur? A. Exosphere. B. Stratosphere. C. Troposphere. Or letter D. Exosphere. Ayan. Pinakauna talaga si JM Ladignon. I think this is one of your favorite topics in our lesson. Diba? Yung different layers of the atmosphere. Now, let's check your answer. It's letter C. Troposphere. Very good. Again. Correct. Correct kayong lahat. Next, number eight. In which layer of the atmosphere can you find the ozone layer? Ayan. So A, mesosphere. B, thermosphere. C, stratosphere. Or letter D, exosphere. So what's your answer for number eight? Ayan. So number eight, okay, JM answered letter C. And the rest of the people answered letter C. Now let's check. Yan, very good. It's stratosphere. Parang memorize nyo na tong different layers of the atmosphere. Okay, number nine. Medyo bilisan natin ng konti. One of the important roles of the atmosphere is to protect our planet from the intense heat from the sun by absorbing high levels of radiation such as ultraviolet and x-ray. Which layer of the atmosphere is particularly playing this role? Ayan, A, stratosphere, B, thermosphere, C, mesosphere, or letter D, troposphere. Ayan, this is very important question talaga, no? Which layer of the atmosphere is particularly playing this kind of role of absorbing, absorbing the high levels of radiation and the ultraviolet rays and also X-ray? So all of your answers are letter A. Now let's check. It's letter B, it's thermosphere. Because thermosphere is the hottest among of all layers. Kaya nga siya tinatawag na thermo because that, that is where the, the ultraviolet rays and the x-rays absorb. Kaya siya mainit. Okay? It's thermo. So it means, it means heat. Okay? So may mga naka-answer din ng letter B, Ma'am Janet. Congratulations. Okay? Si Ma'am Janet lang. Okay, wow. Sige. Let's continue. Number 10, we're now halfway of our exam. Which of the following will likely happen if we lose the planet's atmosphere? Remember, if walang mga layers of the atmosphere, what will happen to the planet or what will happen to our Earth? A, mornings will become longer and nights will be shorter. B, the moon will become more attracted to the Earth's gravity. C, polar ice caps eventually will melt and bodies of water will dry out. Or letter D, weather will become more extreme than what we usually experience. Okay. So, may iba-iba yung mga sagot nila. Diba? Ayan. Sino kaya? Choose the best answer for this, for number 10. Okay, so the correct answer is letter C. Polar ice caps eventually will melt and bodies of water will dry out. Yan. So, very good. May mga nakatami din ng letter C. Van, Elisha, Kerubin, Samantha Blasi, okay, Aliana Ocampo. Yan, congratulations. Now, um, count your scores later, ha? Okay, what happens air as it warms up? Yan. A, it rises. B, it sinks. C, it rises, then sinks. Or letter D, it spreads in all direction. Ayan. So what's your answer for number 11? Okay, so let's see. Ashley answered letter D from Francisco Bangoy National High School. Ayan. Also, Ma'am Janet answered letter A from Massachusetts, USA. <laughs> Ayan. International ang datingan. Okay. Vera answered letter D for number 11. Now, let's check the answer. The correct answer is 
Letter A, of course, it rises the air as it warms up. Kaya nga yun siyang evaporation. Okay? Next, very good. We're getting closer. Number 12, bilisan natin ang context. In what direction does hanging amihan come from? A, northwest. B, northeast. C, southwest. Or letter D, southeast. Ayan, so mag-isip-isip. If you could still recall about hanging amihan and hanging habagat. Okay, so may nag-answer na. Si JM answered letter B for number 12. Okay, Ashley, 12. Ang B, Kauri B, Van B. Now let's check your answer for hanging amihan is? Very good. It's North is hanging amihan. Ayan. Mayroon pa bang hindi nakakamali? Mayroon pa bang closer to, perfect, to perfection na? Ayan. So thank you. Let's proceed. Which of the following correctly describes the air on land during the occurrence of sea breeze? A. Land cools down faster than the air cools and sinks. B. Land cools down faster than the air cools and sinks. C. Land heats up faster than the air warms up and rises. Or letter D. Land heats up faster than that the air warms up and spreads in all directions. Ayan. So, parang may something ano dito, yung A at saka B magkapareha. Okay, hindi ko nakita. Sige lang. Let's check your answer for number number 13. For number 13, sabi ni Avril, it's, now, it's letter B. Okay, then Van answered letter C. So, let's check your answer. The correct answer for number 13, 13 is letter C. Ayan. Vera got it right. Elisha, Ma'am Janet. Land heats up faster that the air warms up and up and rises. Yun yung na-discuss ko about sea breeze. Next. Number 14. Which of the following should we do if there is a low pressure area approaching the country? Ayan, so number 14 na tayo ha. If meron daw tayong low pressure area in our country, what will ha- what we're going to do? A, prepare sunblock to avoid painful sunburn. B, prepare a lot of water to avoid dehydration. C, prepare huge hats and swimwear for swimming. Or letter D, prepare jackets and umbrellas for rainy weather. So what's the answer for number 14? Ayan. Yeah, congratulations. Now, let's check. Answer, Richmond. Answer, letter D. Kerubin D. Kauri D. Vera D. Ano nga ba if we say low pressure area sa ating lugar? Correct. Very good. You have to prepare jackets and umbrellas for rainy weather. Kasi for sure, magkakaroon ng tagulan at pag-ambon sa lugar natin. Or sa a particular place. Not just in a country, but in a particular place. Yan. Yan. So, hindi kailangan mag-sunblock kasi magkakaroon ng pag-ulan-ulan sa lugar na iyon. Okay, number 15. What is the degree tilt of the Earth's axis? Okay. A, 23.5 degrees. B, 32.5 degrees. C, 33.5 degrees. Or letter D, 66.5 degrees. So what's the answer? The degree tilt of our Earth's axis. Kerobin answered first. And also Richmond answered letter A. Ma'am Janet also A. Ashley and Van also answered A. Adrian Joseph Herrera is also A. The correct answer for number 15 is? Very good. It's? Letter A, ayan. And also Kevin Sendenya, one of my students in Section Lilac. Okay, very good. Okay, now we're down to our last four questions. Which of the following best explains why Philippines cannot experience seasons like fall and winter? Bakit nga ba? Bakit wala tayong fall at saka winter? Bakit walang snow? Bakit ganun? Okay, so the, these are the reasons and 
only one um, reason is valid here in this um, option. A, the Philippines is located near the equator that receives direct heat from the sun. B, the Philippines in the northern hemisphere that receives more energy from the sun. C, the Philippines is located between the equator and the Tropic of Capricorn that receives direct sunlight. Or letter D, the Philippines is near by the Pacific Ocean that makes its season to be limited to dry and wet season. Now, let's check your answers. Almost all of your answers are letter C. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. May nag-answer din ng letter A. Okay, may nag-answer ng letter A also. A at saka C. Now, let's check your answer. The correct answer is letter A. The Philippines is located near, just above the equator that receives direct heat from the sun. Okay. Now, we're bound to our last three after this. Number 17, Jose and Josh are working together to record the time of sunrise and time sunset for the month of June. On June 20, 2020, they recorded sunrise to happen at 5.32 a.m. and sunset is recorded at 18.23 p.m. or shall I say, that is a military time of 6.23 p.m. What is the length of daytime on the said day? Ayan. Sige, calculate nyo ngayon. So, napaka, ano talaga, no? Napaka workaholic talaga nito ni Josie at saka ni Josh kasi record nila yung oras ng sunrise to happen and also to sunset. So, record nila at ano ang length of the day on the said day given the two, two time for time for the re recorded time for the sunrise and recorded time for the sunset okay for number 17 letter a 12 hours and 15 minutes b 12 hours and 51 minutes c 12 hours and 91 minutes or letter d 13 hours and 31 minutes so what's your answer for number 17 okay now, let's check. Okay, so the correct answer for that is B, 12 hours and 51 minutes. Ayan. Okay. So, let's... Next. What phenomenon occurs when the sun is blocked between the moon... When viewed from Earth. Ayan. <laughs> Thank you, Ma'am Janet, for the applause. A. Penumbra. B. Total solar eclipse. C. Total lunar eclipse. Or letter D. Partial solar eclipse. Nandito na tayo sa eclipses. Diba? We, this is the last topic in the fourth quarter in a lesson 6 or module 6 about the two kinds of eclipses, lunar and solar. So what do you mean or what do you call the phenomenon that occurs or phenomena that occurs when the sun is blocked completely by the moon when viewed from the earth? Is it penumbra for letter A, B, total solar eclipse, C, total lunar eclipse, or D, partial solar eclipse? Okay, the correct answer is letter Letter B, of course, it is total solar eclipse when the sun is blocked completely by the moon. Ayan, congratulations, you got it right. Ayan, so madami-dami din. Very good. Okay, now we're bound to our second to the last question. Okay. Here's the question. If the sun... Earth and Moon are aligned just like in the diagram. Yan, so nakikita ninyo. Sun, Earth, and Moon. What kind of eclipse will you able to observe? Okay. A. Lunar eclipse. B. Total solar eclipse. Or C. Partial solar eclipse. Or letter D. Umbral solar eclipse. So what's your answer? Ayan, so let's check your answers. Aliana A, Ashley A, 
Mark as is A, JM is also A, RKA, Tauri A, Kerubin A. All of your answers are letter A. The correct answer is, of course, it's letter A. If the earth is at the center while the sun and the moon is on the other sides. I mean, on the left and the right. Okay, so congratulations, you got it right. Ayan, so you already know the difference between the lunar and the solar eclipse depending on the position of our earth and the moon. Since that only the earth and the moon is moving while the sun is at the center of the universe or the solar system rather. Okay, congratulations. Now to our last question. Ayan. And then after this, we will go into total all your scores. What kind of solar eclipse will you see if you are standing in the shadowed area A? Ayan. So A, parang kailangan ito ng ano, diagram. ba? Pero pang hindi ko nasali ata ang diagram. Sige lang. Just to have na lang siguro uh, a wild guess. Okay. Again, what kind of solar eclipse will you see if you are standing in the shadowed area A? A, total solar eclipse, B, partial solar eclipse, C, umbral solar eclipse, or letter D, both A and B. Ayan. So what's your answer for number 20? Kaligtaan ko ang diagram nito. Sorry, I stand, um, I stand corrected as well. Okay, so let's see your answer, the correct answer. Uh, by the way, some of your answers are letter A, between A and B. So, what's the answer for number 20? The correct answer is, now let's see if you have a very good gut feeling of this question with your correct answer. Kung tama ba talaga with your gut feel. Okay? The correct answer for number 20 is letter A. Wow! Very good! Parang nag-gets nyo talaga and you have really uh, a very good gut feel. Okay, gut feeling without any diagram at all. You got it right. Very good talaga kayo mga students ko. I am very proud of you. Even though in the midst of pandemic, you still have able to uh, conquer and answer without the diagram given. Maraming salamat and God bless us always. Now this time, you've already done. Kindly comment your scores and I am very excited to know your scores. To so those students who have able to have high scores during our summative examinations. Okay, so now let's see and I will read your scores. With your permission, Xavier Rafael from Francisco Bangoy National High School got five mistakes. It's 15 over 20. Yeah, Aliza Zaydain Gasa got three mistakes with 17 over 20. And also, Ashley from F. Bangoy is 15 over 20. Very good. Adrian Joseph Herrera, 15 over 20. Kauri Jovita has two mistakes. And it's 18 over 20 from Francisco Bangoy National High School. Kerubin, which is one of our best shooties for this week or last week, got 15 over 20 from Novaliches National High School. And also, Ma'am Janet. Sabi ni Ma'am Janet, saitastic sa lahat. Oo nga eh. Maraming salamat sa inyo. Irina Kwa got 17 over 20. Congratulations. RK Kabuhat also got 14 over 20. Vera Cruz got 16 over 20. And Avril Prime Danyosos. Okay, this is my student from Section Lilac. Her school is 14 over 20 and has six mistakes. Well, congratulations, everyone. Just keep on commenting your scores. I know you have a very good time answering our summative examination. And I am very happy with the scores that you've, that you've done or that you've gained, rather. Congratulations. Ayan, sabi ni Kerubin. Congratulations, keyboard warriors. Ayan. Okay? So this, this time, all right, wait lang, medyo... Makit yung aking brace. <laughs> Aral. Okay. Okay. Ayan. Sorry. 
this time we will have um i will going to to present to you our science code of the week Ayan. and this is really a good segment for me ha, because this would make me more guided in my whole week of working as a teacher at the same time as a mentor to my students and also as a brother and a son of my parents and a brother to my sisters and to my brothers. Ayan. And our science quote of the week, are you excited? <laughs> are you excited to know our science quote of the week? Okay, sige, ibigay ko na. According to Claire Cook that if plan A doesn't work, the alphabet has 25 more letters. 204 if you're in Japan. Diba? diba? Um, we planned everything. Maganda na yung plano. Things are okay. But then suddenly, um, something went wrong. Some, something doesn't work. Something it didn't pala. Hindi pala nangyari. And you will get frustrated and get disappointed because yung pinano mo, yung yung inexpect mo you, because you have a high expectations to yourself and to everyone or to others na hindi niya na achieve or hindi mo na achieve because of that you will get unhappy you will be disappointed no always remember class my dear students that if your plan doesn't work they have it has many letters in the alphabet we could have plan b C, D, E, F, G, N, up to 25 in English. But if you are a Japanese, most especially Kauri, who is listening right now, diba? Kauri, Kauri is a half Japanese, it's, and Na, Naguchi, my, one of my students, they're in Japan. It's 204, so marami pa. There are many things to do. Do not dwell on just one plan. You should have another plan to do it so that hindi ka ma-frustrate kung hindi man mangyari sa iyo o yung plano mo ay hindi pala nag-work out. Always remember that that plan A should not be um you should not stick on plan A. You should have plan B, C and a lot of options in life. Okay? And always think positive that you can do it. Do not think negatively because if it is negative, you cannot do. You cannot do whatever you want because you're already nega. You are really pessimistic. So instead, because of the problems that you have, you should be strong and you should um, pray to God and always ask for guidance. 